Happy Wednesday, my savvy service provider, scaling to 10K months. I have a great conversation for you today. This is gonna be a really juicy one. This is a topic that has come up so much on my free sold out strategy sessions and honestly with clients. Y'all may not know that I started with two new clients this month and I'm starting with another new one next month. So I've been talking to a lot of people recently and there's a lot of confusion around this. Today we're talking about how to increase conversions with three essential things in relationship building. So we know that businesses are built on relationships. Like that's the key to everything. Like that's the reason we're doing email, the reason we're showing up online, like the why of everything is that foundation of building relationships. And I see so often people get so confused. They make it more difficult than it needs to be. The online space makes it more confusing. So we are gonna talk about how to really put this in your business so that you can increase conversions just with these three simple keys. So I'm really excited about this conversation. I am battling the crud that my kids brought home from school. So for the past week I've been sick. So hopefully we don't get into this and I lose my voice in 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to speak a little bit more softly and a little more lightly just to kind of try to preserve my voice. I have client calls after this. Um, so I have to save my voice for that. And I know that when I read to my kids at night, I start losing my voice after a while. So we will see how far we go. And if we have to pick it up again next week, we'll do that because this is just that important. So if you're joining live, say hello, be sure to leave a comment, ask your questions. Like I'm literally doing this for you. I put a lot of like prep into this because I really want you to be able to go and increase conversions after listening to this. So if you have questions, ask them. Like I love the discussion. I love your interaction. I love knowing honestly that I'm on the right track and that this is landing with you. And if it's not landing with you, please let me know. Let me pull it up in the group now that I'm mentioning that. Um, if you uh, do some kind of comment or question or you know, just say hi, you'll be entered to win a playbook on my six figure plan how you can make this year, 2024, the year you join the you know, 100K club. And yes, we are in August, but you could still get there. Like you may just need to book a few more high ticket clients and you can get there. And if you're like Jordan, it, the math doesn't math this year, you will have it for next year because you can start the year off with this plan and take it and run with it and you will join the 100K club. Like that's just how it works. Like I've done this enough I've been supporting businesses behind the scenes for eight and a half years, like I know my shit. So anyone who comments will be entered to win that will uh, announce the winner on Friday. So let's jump in. There I am. I am live because <laughs> I lost it the other week. Let's go ahead and talk about like why this is so important. I have a post today on Instagram that basically says if I were starting from zero, here's what I would focus on. And it just says, build relationships, build relationships, build relationships. And so that is why we're having this conversation because everyone gets so confused. They are like, what platform should I be on? Should I use, you know, get reels, audio, trending sent to me every week? Should I do this? Should I do that? And the thing to come back to is we're just building relationships. Like, whether you are a service provider or a product-based business, whether you have low ticket or high ticket, whether you sell online or it's all in person, like it literally doesn't matter, but you're, you're building, you know, it's all based on relationships. So that is the one thing I want to come back to. That is the crux of all of this. Like without, like without relationships, you don't have clients, you don't have a business. So, and especially if you're pivoting, from low ticket to high ticket, this is something I talk about all the time. You need to be there and be willing to build deeper relationships. That's just the truth of it. If you go from offering a low ticket or an hourly service to something more in depth, more like of an investment for your person and their time and their money, like you've just got to be willing to build that deeper relationship on the front end this is something I'm working with clients all the time. Maybe when they were offering their hourly or their low ticket or their done for you services, they didn't have to, they would just get a referral or someone in a Facebook group posted, Hey, I'm looking for this. And somebody tagged you like 
you didn't have to do that. Like, yes, it was based on relationships. You were kind of using the relationships you'd already built, but you weren't really having to like build new relationships with new people on a regular daily basis. So this is just so, so important and why we're having this conversation, especially if you're here and you're pivoting to high ticket. As a bookkeeper, I charge $35 an hour. I would get CPA referrals. I, most of the work in my first five years were from CPA referrals and it was from the QuickBooks Pro Advisor website. Like I was a QuickBooks Pro Advisor, people would come from there. That was it, it was very simple. But when I pivoted to my high ticket one-to-one -one coaching, it was so different. Like it was a hard reality. Like <laughs> it took me time to realize this and years and thousands and thousands of dollars. So that's why I'm kind of bringing it and sharing it with you. But you do need more of a sales process. You do need more of that protracted relationship building. And of course people can find you and hire you right off the bat. Like people find my website and they hire me like that's it but i also have a ton of content for them to binge i've got two years i don't know at this point maybe three years of these live streams in here i have a shit ton of content online like you can know me really fast and so that's kind of how that's able to happen whereas if you're a little bit newer or don't have as much content out there it's still it, it's an outlier and we don't want to play to the outlier so we definitely want to set up your business so that it does build a relationship and it is a protracted process. So that's what we're kind of talking about today, but I wanted to talk about like why this was so important because we know there are thousands and thousands of people online doing basically the same thing you are, doing the same thing I am. So we are really not wanting to build relationships with all of the billions of people we could sell to. We want to build relationships with the right people who are the right fit for our work, who you know, are going to be best fit clients that renew over and over and stay with us for the long term. I just looked this up the other day, but there's like 2.4 billion users a month on Instagram. Half of them are female. Like for every single client I work with, for every single sold out strategy session I've had, that is more than enough people to keep us full. Like we couldn't even support that many clients. Like, so it's just great evidence to see that there are more than enough people out there who need your offer, who need your work, whether it's health coaching or it's health care or it's business services to help someone grow their business. Like there's more than enough people out there that need what you have. And so it's a matter of building relationships with the right ones. So that's like the crux of all of this. So Let's also talk about why businesses make, like relationships make such a big difference in business. It's just the thing, I don't know if you've ever gotten like an email or a text or something that was supposed to be like for you, but it was just really weird. Like maybe it was technically correct, but like, like I'm getting them now with like the political stuff, like these text messages that I guess someone who is very smart and has a ton of marketing information and dollars is crafting these so they're very well done but i don't know how i got on their list i don't know why they're sending me these texts like it just makes no sense i just delete it i'm like this is i don't know this doesn't feel like it's for me and it's because i don't have a relationship with them and so if you are sending dms or you're sending emails or you're doing personal outreach or posting in Facebook groups, if you don't have that relationship, it just feels weird, it doesn't land. I saw a post in a Facebook group today, and I don't know this person, I don't know their offer, but they were basically selling a very high ticket offer in a Facebook group post. Like their one month offer cost more than my six month offer. And I was like, that's a big ask, like to put that in a Facebook group, like, Maybe there are people in the Facebook group that follow them and love what they do and they'll buy whatever that person puts out there. I have no idea. But my guess is asking someone to pay five figures in a Facebook group post ain't gonna work. Like I've been doing this long enough. Like I would love for that to work actually. Like it would make my job so I probably wouldn't even have a job actually. But 
it would make things so much easier. And I'm sure maybe there's one person that will land on that, that has a relationship with her that buys that five figure offer from one post. But I just don't see that to be the thing that happens. And I see people do that a lot where they're really just like skipping that relationship building process. And they're just like throwing, basically asking someone to marry them like right off the bat. And that's not what we're doing. So we're gonna talk about today like the steps you need to successfully build relationships because people think that they can kind of bypass all of that and you just can't. Like you do need to take the time and the energy and the intention to build actual relationships. So that's why it's so important because you can have the best worded post, you can have the best worded email, you can spend a bunch of money on reels or whatever, but like, if you don't have that relationship with the person, it doesn't make sense, it's not gonna land, they're gonna be confused and they're gonna delete it and move on with their lives. That's just the truth. So let's see, coming back. And I looked up, and this is something I think is so fascinating, the familiarity effect. So that is basically when consumers are more inclined to buy from someone they're familiar with versus something new, even if the product or service is inferior. And I know if you're in this group, you have an amazing product or service. Like I know that yours is not inferior, but it's so interesting. And I think about this with my own buying experience. Like I'm busy. I'm a multi six figure business owner. I have three kids. I don't have time to just like scour the internet for like every best thing out there. I'm kind of like good is good enough. If I've bought from this company before and I liked it, I'm going to do it again. Like maybe there is another company that sells a better protein powder or a better supplement or whatever I'm looking for. But I'm like, you know, if I bought this other stuff from this company and now I want this, I'm just going to buy it because I already know I can trust them. They probably already have my credit card information on file. Like I know that's not like the best way to buy, especially if you're doing like a high ticket investment. We got to put a little more intention. But just to like have that conversation and remember that like someone's more likely to buy from you if they're familiar with you rather than go try to like, you know, research everything. I don't know what I was going to say, but it reminds me of the conversation I had. I had like deja vu for a second. The conversation I had before Black Friday, and I'll probably have this conversation again this year before Black Friday, is that like around Black Friday with the deals, people aren't just like, let me go try to find all these new businesses. Like they're buying Black Friday sales from businesses they're already familiar with, businesses they've already bought from during the year that they're already familiar with during the year. Like, so that's why I'm always talking about like touch points and being like in touch through the year. Like launches are made between launches. Like if you only show up and sell to someone and get in their inbox at Black Friday, like they're probably not going to buy from you because they haven't had that relationship all year. So that not to go off on another tangent but that's just it's why it's just so important to build these relationships even when you're not selling even if you're not like you know i'm got like a spot opening this fall for one-to-one but i'm not always like opening spots i'm not always opening my intensives like but i'm always showing up in between because i know it's all about building relationships and that's how it is for my clients so let me bring it down Mm. So we're going to talk through the three essential keys. And because I'm not coaching you one-to-one, please don't take this in here that you need to go do 50 things. Like, please don't take this and be like, oh shit, like I was already doing all this and now I need to go do more. Like, do not hear that, please. See how you can apply this to your business and what you're already doing. Or if you just have no idea, you feel like you need to do 50 different things or you feel like you need to throw out what you're doing and start from scratch, like book one of my sold out strategy sessions. I'll put the link below after this because this is where we can really figure out like, okay, what are you already doing? What can we tweak? What can you keep? What needs to actually change? Like, but you know, please for the love of all things good, don't hear this and just be like, well, now I need to go like throw everything out the window and start from scratch because I promise you there are probably ways you can tweak this with what you're already doing, or maybe you're kind of already doing this, but you just need to be a little more intentional about it. Maybe reel it in and do simple a little bit better. So that's kind of like my 
disclaimer of all this because I know people are going to hear this and be like, oh shit, now I need to go do X, Y, Z on top of A, B, C and blah, blah, blah. And so that's not what we're doing. We are keeping it simple. We are basic bitches. And I say that with all the love. I'm like, I'm a basic bitch through and through. Keep it simple for me. But I'm laughing all the way to the bank because that is how you scale to multi six figures. That's how you take home more pay. That's how you have epic client results and people wanting to renew with you is because you are keeping it simple in Vegas. So let's jump in. I've teased it out enough. We are going to talk about this and we're going to look at it through the lens of not even in business. Think about your relationships with the people in your life, your spouse, your best friends, your kids, your parents, your in-laws, like think about all of those people. You have different level of touch points with them. That are that that's the three keys we're talking about. We're talking about icebreaker content, we're talking about engagement content, and we're talking about loyalty content. So this is like you can think of them as like stair steps. And think about your friends. Like think about when you met them for the first time or you met your spouse. Like Maybe you went out on a couple dates. Maybe you texted. Like maybe you had these long, deep conversations. Maybe you went on a trip together. Like you can see that like you're starting with something small, with something like not a high investment on the other person's end. Like you meet for coffee. It's like, okay, it's, you know, low, low stakes. You know, it doesn't cost us a bunch of money. It doesn't take a ton of time. And then we're like building the relationship from there. So that's how you're thinking about your content. That's how you're thinking about emails or whatever your strategy is, thinking about those stair steps. And we're gonna touch on each one of them because each one of them are super important. So the first one is the icebreaker content. You want to have a mix of all three of these. When you're talking to someone, you also want to know which level they're at. Like again, you do not want to be proposing to someone on your coffee date. Like it just they're gonna be very confused and they're gonna shut down and they're probably gonna walk away. So know where your person's at in this process to know what the next step is that you're asking them to do. So the icebreaker content, this is for like initial people finding you. This is for cold audience. This is, you know, think about somebody lands on your reel and they think it's funny and they share it with somebody or they land on your reel and your call to action is follow me for more of this and they start following you. Like think about if you're flipping through, you know, we have like our local neighborhood magazine. If I'm flipping through the magazine and I just see someone's ad for the first time, like that is icebreaker, you know, cold audience, just giving you a taste of this first thing. So it really would not make sense if someone lands on my real for the first time, they're going to be very confused if I'm pitching them or in this Facebook group, I'm seeing this post, this girl for the first time, and she's pitching me on a $10,000 a month offer. Like it feels very confusing. Like, I don't know who you are. I don't know. Is this for me? I don't understand. So if you're posting in Facebook groups, if you're showing up online, Think about the icebreaker content and where that person is who's finding it and give them like an easy next step, like not asking them to invest $10,000, not asking them to maybe even hop on a free call because I know that's more for like my more engaged audience. We are making this like, what is that easy next step? It doesn't take them long to do. It doesn't require much from them. Like what is something like they can do from there. So that is the icebreaker content. Like they see your post, maybe they go to your Instagram handle or they think your reel is funny. Like it's just that first step. Like maybe they sign up, you know, to start following you or they sign up for more of your mid-level engagement content. But that's just where we want to see like what's the purpose of this. So I've been playing with reels recently. I don't know if y'all follow me on Instagram or not, but I used to do very more like canned kind of reels and I'm just putting more intention and just having more fun with them recently. And what I'm doing with most of those, also because I'm full, I don't have a lot of one-to-one spots to open, but I'm pretty much just telling people to follow me. Like I'm not saying go hop on a free call. I'm not saying go buy my 1,000, my 1,000, my nine month, 
my brain. Oh my gosh, I swear I'm okay. <laughs> Go buy my six month one to one coaching, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not asking people to do that when they find my reel. I'm just saying follow me, follow my account. That's all you gotta do. Like, let me know, send me a DM if this lands with you, drop a comment if you like this or you can relate or what's your favorite thing. Like, that's all I'm asking them to do with that icebreaker content. And from there, they'll naturally go to the more engagement content. So I'll go back real quick before we get into the engagement content, but that's why it's so important to have your Instagram profile or any profile to be really clear because that is how you know the people are coming in. It is the cold traffic. It's the people who don't really know you. And if they have to sit there and try to figure out what you do, they're not gonna take the time. So that's kind of like my call to action here with the icebreaker cold content is just see like what is the easy next thing you're asking someone to do and think about like okay if this is someone who is brand new to my world what's that like low ticket not even low ticket low risk like easy lift on their end action they can take to just take a step to deepen the relationship that's all we're doing at each of these things is just taking a little extra step to deepen that relationship so now we'll move into the engagement content this is that middle content that fosters interaction it fosters trust it's a warmer audience they might be following you in stories that's when they might be on your newsletter they might have downloaded your freebie like think about like polls quizzes all that stuff like that was a step from that cold traffic first so people who are sharing more comments or commenting more or like this is when you know people are more interested in your behind the scenes like cold traffic someone who doesn't know me doesn't give a shit what I did this weekend they don't care where I'm going on vacation like none of that but like my warmer more engaged people are following me in stories that's why I've started selling more in stories because that's the warmer audience so full permission to be like my feed is just gonna be fun it's gonna be easy next step follow me and then the stories is when you're selling or making your pitch or like letting people know what you offer because those are the people who are more engaged they already started following you they already know you're giving value and this is when you really get to like nurture that and this is like where you really get to get feedback from them and see what's landing and seeing what they like and when you talk about this like oh snap I got like bunches of DMS from that like I've been playing with that recently and it's really fun but this is when you're really getting to know people because the colder engaged traffic, they might have comments, they might not, but you don't know if those are your people yet. Like they might not even be people you want to work with. Whereas the engaged warmer audience, you're probably seeing like, oh yeah, they would be a great client. I would love to support them. That's when you start caring, like what's landing with them? What's the feedback you're getting? And that's when you're giving them a next step. Maybe that is when they are getting on you know a free call or a free audit or whatever that is so this is why this is key to your strategy so that you know you are always creating some kind of content at each of these levels <clears throat> this is why you're making like the easy next step clear so in my stories i'm selling people my sold out strategy session like i'm not asking them to follow me because that doesn't make sense because they're probably already following me or if then they're in my stories and they're not following me, I don't know. I don't even know how people see stories that they're not following because I don't do that, but <coughs> maybe some people do. But what I'm saying is know where, like if you're showing up in your emails or in stories, um, trying to think of another example. Um, let me know if y'all have questions because I don't know how many examples y'all need or this is probably pretty clear, but just thinking about like what content are you creating that nurtures someone a little bit deeper. So it's not just like the call to action or the sale or the pitch, but you are helping people get to know you and you're creating basically longer form content for that person. So if you think about like my friend and I, sometimes we text, sometimes we have conversations, sometimes we see each other in person. Like there's all these different levels of relationships that we're not always only texting or we're not always only getting together in person like we need mixes of each one and your audience is busy their parents their business owners their volunteers like they need different levels so that depending on where they are like 
they've got a busy day, they don't have time to read your big blog post, but they have time to go in stories and see what you're doing. Like give them a taste of all these different levels so that wherever they're at, they can like find something that they can consume at that time. So that leads to the loyalty content. So this is, this is what this is. Like this is my deep, longer form content. Like you're not watching this if you don't know me. I mean, maybe you have no idea who I am and you just landed on this and thank you, I appreciate that. But most of the people who are watching this that give a shit about what I have to say are the people who've already seen my like cold icebreaker content, who have seen the more engaged content and who are now built up and be like, okay, now I'm willing to listen to Jordan for 30 minutes because she knows her shit and she knows what she's talking about. But if you didn't know that, there's no reason you'd sit here for 30 minutes. So think about that with your content. Like if you're doing a webinar, like who are you pitching that webinar to? And that's that we can talk through what deeper, longer content is. It could be webinars, it could be master classes, live trainings, it could be, you know, going live on Instagram, um, it could be long blog posts, podcasts, like all of that is great long form content that is really just deepening that relationship even more. And that is like when someone is in, like I know there are people, I have mentors that I listen to because I like what they put out. I'm like, I am gonna listen to this 55 minute long podcast because I know I like their stuff and I know I'll walk away with value. Whereas if I'm not listening to random podcasts that Apple says, oh, you might like these, because I'm like, no. If I don't know you, I'm not jumping into your 55 minute long podcast, like, no. So think about that when you're selling your webinars, selling your masterclass, because even if they're free, you're still selling them. Like someone has to give their email, they have to take the time, they have to show up for it. You're gonna get emails afterwards, they know, like it's a whole thing. So be sure to know like where you're pitching those. And I mean, when I start pitching my next masterclass, you will for sure see that in my Instagram feed, but I just know it might not do as well there as it does in stories or it does with the people in my group who are already familiar with me. Like people know I provide a shit ton of value in my masterclasses, like better than a lot of people's paid stuff. So like the people who know, know, and they're signing up. Like I can see the same people signing up for masterclasses because they know I just provide a ton of value. And so think about that. Like Someone, you know, what is that deeper relationship building you can do before someone's paying you money? Like, yes, in a you know, one-to-one -one container, I'm building really deep relationships with people, but before someone buys from me, what is that d deeper relationship building that you're doing? Again, I've talked to so many people on these sold out strategy sessions who just did not have that piece. They were in stories or they're posting to Facebook groups or they're haphazardly doing some things, but they're not really thinking about like the client journey. Like where is someone going when they land on their profile or land on a post? Like what are the next steps? What is the journey that someone is going through? And that's what we're mapping out. So if you don't know that, book one of my sold out strategy sessions, because we will do that. We can do that in 30 minutes. It's pretty simple, but you just have to have the, for the forefront the forethinking and the intentionality to set that up. And then it's a matter of playing with like when you're doing these things, like one of my clients is going to do her first webinar soon, like so excited for her. And then from there we can think about how often are we doing this? I have a client who has a big launch coming up. So she is strategically doing a webinar before that to get people signed up, to get them warmed up and then to pitch this, you know, like group program off of that. Like, that is when we're getting super intentional with your sales process. And that's when you don't want to be throwing spaghetti at the wall or just trying different things. Or like one day I'm selling templates in my stories and the next day I'm selling website builds in my feed. Like that makes no sense. Like give your person an easy protracted process to go through so that it's like they don't go to your profile and there's like 10 different things they could download. Like that makes no sense. Give them one easy next step because we are overwhelmed, we get confused, we have short attention spans, make sure that you've got pieces of content in the icebreaker phase, in the engagement phase, and then the loyalty phase because different people are going to be in each of those buckets and you want to give them that easy next step 
and you also want to help them build that relationship wherever they're at. So even if they can't go listen to your 30 minute podcast, they could go into your stories and still get some value while they're sitting at the doctor's office waiting. Like just being that person that they know they can reliably see your stuff. And that's another thing, like doing all this consistently. And I talked in a live stream previously that like consistency doesn't always equal momentum, but this is a place where it's like, you do have to have the consistency to get the momentum, but they don't go hand in hand. Like you can still have consistency and not build momentum, but that's a different conversation. But your audience needs to trust that you're gonna show up. It's really hard to pay someone if they're like, oh, I liked so-and-so stuff and they go to your feed and they're like, oh, she hasn't posted in two months. Like, is she still in business? Like, it just teaches them not to trust you and not to go back and look for your stuff. I did this recently. I was hiring a new team member. So I was looking at people's online stuff and if it looked like someone hadn't posted in a while, I'm like, well, I don't know, are they still taking clients? Are they still in business? And then I know just from working with people that people get busy and they stop marketing, but it's like, I don't wanna work with you if you're not gonna be consistent across the board. And you get to decide what consistency looks like for you. That's what we talked about at the beginning is don't take this and think you need to do like 50 things or a masterclass every month or start a podcast. Like, please do not do that. But think about how you get to be consistent, how you get to have each of these touch points daily, weekly, monthly, like whatever that looks like for you, figure that out and show up consistently because that is going to build so much trust. If people land on your account and they love your stuff and then you just stop showing up, your business could still survive and be okay later, but it just erodes the trust so much with them. And obviously we all have life things and shit comes up and all of that, but for the most part, being consistent is really going to show someone before they pay you that they can trust you because if they don't trust you to show up in your stories or show up in your content that you've been doing, it's really hard to be like, well, let me go pay that girl to design my website and work with me for three months or something. So it's a matter of like, you get to decide your consistency, but make sure you're adding in all of these pieces of content, all of these touch points so that you're building that relationship on all these different levels. And you know, whatever phase someone is, they have an easy next step. Okay, they just found you. What's that easy next step? Okay, now they know like and you know, they know and like you, they follow you. Now what? What's the next thing you're asking them to do? Okay, they just listened to your podcast. What's your thing at the end of the podcast or the thing at the end of your webinar that they can do to dip, deepen the relationship? Like that is what we are working with here and those are the three essential keys of relationship building. And I'm going to go ahead and hop off. Said everything I had to say. But um Let's see. Oh yeah, and I kind of talked about this. I did have a client example, but I kind of already touched on that. Like a client who had this like free audit that she was putting out there and you had to join live so that you could get audited for your, I'm not gonna say what she does, but it, she had, I don't know what it is now. I need to get the latest number, but she had 25 people sign up for that like after like one day of promoting it, which is amazing, but so this is like the process that I can take you through. Like she had that audit where people show up and they can, two people get chosen. And then from there, she's pitching the webinar. Like this is a free training. It's a definitely a deeper thing. Like it's more, you know, someone has to commit to it. And then from there on the webinar, she's pitching her group program. So that's kind of to show you like the group program is like the end game. And we're kind of just like, creating those touch points along the way. And she just does such a beautiful job of showing up to her audience daily in stories in her feed. Like even when she's not launching, when she's not selling, she is showing up for her people like consistently. And that's why people sign up, you know, 25 people signed up in one day because she shows up and provides so much value consistently. They're like, oh, well, of course I'm going to like sign up for this because I've already gotten so much value from these other things. So that was the client example I wanted to give. Um, and it works because she's always building relationships. Like, again, even if you're not launching or even if you don't have a spot open, it's just good business to always keep showing up. Like, that's kind of like what keeps you out of feast or famine. It's what future proofs your business. And I'll save some of that because it goes into our conversation I have for next week that I'm really excited about. But if you're not sure how to build relationships, if you're not sure 
how you're intentionally working these three levels of touch points. If you're not sure what your sales process is, if you're not sure what the client journey is, or maybe you're not sure why you're leaking clients or where people are dropping off, book one of my sold out strategy sessions. This is one-to-one -one support. It's 30 minutes. You get me. I have eight and a half years of experience supporting clients behind the scenes. My clients make tens and thousands of dollars in new revenue. They are multi six figure businesses. They're multi seven figure businesses. Like I know business. I study this shit all day. I support clients at every age stage phase. Like I got you. So book a free session. You're kind of crazy if you don't. So I'll put the link below. Think we got some spots next week. So be sure to grab one of those. And I can't wait to see y'all. Again, leave your comments, leave your questions. I hope this has been really helpful for you and gives you something to think about and use in your process so you can build, build deeper relationships because that's also, we're humans. We need connection, we need relationships. And that's really, it's not just good business, but it's just what we fundamentally need. COVID taught us this. We need human connections. So build those deeper relationships, use those three keys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.